campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we're working on a Norcold 1200 refrigerator. Customer states he's getting an NOCO error code on his upper control board, on his display. So let's talk about that NOCO. What NOCO means is not cooling, no cooling. And what's going on with that is inside this refrigerator, I'm going to open up the double door. As we're looking, we're going to take a look at this um, model number and serial number. We're going to need to know that as we're working on this. It's not enough to know the model number. You also need to know the serial number. But in the back back here, you're going to see this little guy back here. Now, he's called a thermistor. A thermistor is a resistor that changes its ohms value based on temperature. And he's on this right side because the coil... The, 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 the cooling coil comes from there and goes back this way. So we're trying to capture the cooling as he enters the fins. Okay. Oh, they're going to do my shadow. I can make puppets. Yeah, how about that? So what's going on with this NOCO? Um, basically, the refrigerator is actually a heating appliance. I know what you're thinking. Darren, you're an idiot. It's keeping my beer cold and keeping all my drinks cold. Or if we're down a suite in Texas, it's keeping my sweet tea cold. Yay, Texas. Uh, we do miss our sweet tea. So what's going on with this is the refrigerator has its boiler on, okay? And the boiler's purpose is to make a distillery and get the ammonia out of the water. We're going to get into all that, how these refrigerators work in another video. But as this boiler is boiling, it's expecting the temperature to be changing. It's, it's expecting to get a resistance value from that resist from that thermistor right there. The thermistor ohms value should be decreasing or increasing, however it goes, but it should be changing and feeding that ohms difference back to the control board. And as long as a boiler is on, the ohms value should be changing over an interval of time. And if the boiler is boiling away, expecting it to get cold, but that resistor is not changing values, then the control board basically interprets that saying, there's a fault somewhere, shut everything down and put it into what might be called hard lockout. Okay, so if that makes sense, we understand what the no cooling error code means. Now, the reason it goes into hard lockout, it's not a big major procedure to reset the hard lockout. You do need to go in the back and take the cover off and jumper some wires to ground and all that. But what Norcold's wanting you to do is call a, an RV technician, such as My RV Works, yay, and have us come out. And it's not enough just to reset the code. We really need to understand what caused the code. Why is this thing thinking that there's not cooling? Is the thermistor bad? Is there a wire the connecting the thermistor to the control board bad? Has a control board failed? Is a heating element out? Is there a fault on the door seal? Is there a bad installation of the refrigerator? All of these things are things we're going to be looking at to try to understand why does this control board think it's not cooling? Okay, it might be cooling just fine, but the thermistor is bad. So at this point, let's go out back and let's take a look on the back side of this refrigerator and take a look at some of the things that might cause a no cooling fault code. Okay, now we're on the back side of the refrigerator, and I've, I've, I've already taken the liberty to take the cover off and, and look at a couple things. Some of the things I'm going to look at is an installation. If this refrigerator is, in fact, a heating appliance, which it is, um, it needs a chimney. If it can't scrub the heat, then it can't cool. So he needs to maintain his heat in his boiler. This is a boiler. You'll know this is that I'm not an idiot by feeling that when your refrigerator is running, and that gets really hot right there. And so does this vessel right here. This is filled with water and ammonia. But like I said, another video, we're going to go into all that. So some of the things we're looking for is zero clearance on the sides here and on the opposite side, which I've already verified. We want less than a one inch gap between your absorber coil and the back wall, which, which we have. We want no obstruction through the chimney. Cool air comes in through here and then goes up out the top. Uh, if your refrigerator's in a slide room, we have to look at some baffling issues and things like that uh, to make sure, but like I said, it's another video. Um, so as we're looking around here, I start looking at other things and look at what we found right there. We have a little crispy kind of uh, 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 heating element. These are heating elements. They're J-shaped. They come in and they come all the way down to the bottom. They glow red hot like a little toaster, if you will, making toast. But we're making a distillery. Now, there are, this refrigerator requires two heating elements. There's one in the back back there. There's one right here. This guy's seen better days. Even his insulation here has been kind of cooked. Okay, now when we find that, that's not healthy. So, step up on a little step here. 
That's what led me over here to this control board. And on this control board, we see something we're not really pleased about. Of course, we're going to see the blown fuse. That just makes sense. But look at that little res that, that blue resistor right there. If you look at that control board, that control board's been heat fatigued or he's had damage. He's brown. Now, I don't know about you, but I would like to hear some of your comments. Um, what we've found right now is we have, A, a blown fuse. We have a resistor that's kind of been cooked in a little bit. Uh, we have one blown heating element. So if this was your refrigerator, would you just replace the fuse and replace the heating element and send the customer on down the road? Or would you go ahead and replace both heating elements, kind of like headlights on a car or wiper blades. If one goes, the other one's going to be going right not too far behind it. We don't know what caused this. We don't have data loggers on it when the event happened, but we do know that we have a heating element that's bad. And of course, when he went bad, he blew the fuse. And before the fuse blew, that resistor probably took a major hit. Um, so I would like to hear some comments back on how you would proceed with this repair. Now, obviously we need to replace the, the, the um, heating element, okay? It requires two. Now, um, we have done jobs where we've been called in to work on these units and uh, the heating element that's installed in the refrigerator is not the correct one. So imagine a world where you take your RV into a shop or a dealership or wherever, maybe even a mobile service company, certainly not my RV works, and uh, the person uh, diagnoses it as a failed heating element and they just grab one they have off the shelf and they stick it in there. Well, it's got yellow and black wires, it must be the right one. They just stick it in there and they charge you a lot of money for putting a heating element in. That's really not the correct way to do this. What we need to do is we need to get the spec of the refrigerator, which we've already done because we know the model number and the serial number, and we need to go look in the book or look online. I have a book that tells me the exact correct spec of the heating element, so we know we put the correct heating element in. Um, we need to get the wattage correct, etc. Um, now on these things, in order to put the heating element in, you might notice that it's a really tight fit right there. So what we're going to have to do, at least on the heating element side, is there's some screws here. There's one down here, and there's one opposite on this other side over here. And if memory serves me, there's four screws along the top inside and four screws along the bottom inside. So that's eight screws on the inside, these two screws on the outside, and this whole refrigerator should just slide forward. You might need to work a little bit, but the whole refrigerator should slide forward, and that's going to give you two, three, four inches to get those heating elements swapped out. Um, now, we're going to go verify the correct heating elements. It's cold out here, so my mouth's not working very well. And we're going to look into replacing this control board. We're going to consult with the customer and try to find out what their wishes are um, on making this repair. Certainly, the cheap solution is to replace a fuse or replace a heating element. The more long-term uh, ensure your success solution would be let's replace the control board, let's replace both heating elements, and um, just give this thing a whole workup. Now there's one more thing I noticed on this refrigerator as I was looking around, and a Norco 1200 is under a recall. Now not all Norco 1200s get the recall, but we're not sure if this one does or does not. What we're going to need to know, and we don't have a strong internet signal out here to go online and check it, but this is the serial number of the cooling unit right here on this refrigerator. So we're gonna to need to know the model number um, and the serial number of the cooling unit. It's a cooling unit that has a recall. The serial number and model number that we saw on the beginning was of the refrigerator, the whole unit. This is the serial number of this cooling, of the, of the just the cooling unit part of the refrigerator. And so we'll go online to norcold.com, we'll navigate that site and we'll enter all of this information uh, to find out if this refrigerator is due for his recall. Next, let's go find out the correct heating elements that go in this refrigerator, okay, based on the model number and the serial number, okay? We'll go do that next. Okay, so now that we are, we've got our book open here, I've got all these um, heating elements. This is a heating element, by the way. You see how they're, they're long? All you ever see is this top part, but they are pretty long. They go all the way down. So that's what the heating element looks like, and he does get to going. But as we look in our book, um, let's see here. Uh, now there's a heating element, call-out number four. So we're going to go down in our book here. We see call-out number four here. It looks like there's two different heating elements. So we go on across. There's two per. Okay, now we're going to get into serial numbers. So our serial number is 1,400,000 something, and this is 11 million and change, and then that's below. So our heating element is this one right here. So that's a 618872, not this other one, okay? So 618872 is the one we're looking for. And here we have a 618872. 
we have a 61872, so we have two of these, yay. And um, this one here is the other one they're calling out, but it's not that one. But look, the wires are the same. So um, imagine a world where <laughs> you just grab this one and put it in. Now, the wattage is the same. The difference is the way they come out here at the top. You'll notice that uh, this guy's got a, a sharper angle than, than this guy here. But um, hey, I'm going to go with what the spec says. I'm an old engineer, and I know spec, so everything's got to be done to spec. Now, in consulting with the customer, another thing we decided to do was to go ahead and replace that control board. And um, it turns out that, that control board, um, the, the, there's more to the control board than just swapping out a control board. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the thermistor. We talked about, we didn't really talk about the upper eyebrow board. But when you swap out a control board, he needs his eyes and his ears to go with him. And so in looking into the options for the customer, um, the best option for him was he found a kit online that he got, and I don't mind that he gets it online. That's actually fantastic. I'm glad to get the customers involved. But he found a kit, and it came with a new control board, new upper eyebrow board, and a new thermistor. Okay, so by getting all three of these, what we're going to be doing is not just replacing the control board, but just getting all new brains. Okay, so the thermistor is what we started talking about in the very beginning of our video. Here it is right here. Um, again, he's a resistance uh, a, a resistor that changes resistance based off of temperature. So what we're going to be doing now is we, we're going to be replacing both of the heating elements and we're going to be replacing the control board and the upper eyebrow board and a new thermistor and we'll get this customer happy camping and keeping all of his stuff cold. Hopefully this video has captured some of your no cooling error codes and some of the things to look for. Really hope it's providing a good service for you folks and just remember happy campers say my RV works.